Welcome everyone to your Shader Notes training. I'm CG Matter and this is lesson 1.2 of the course. Remember we're still in the introductory chapter so we need to do a bit more prep before fully diving in. In this lesson we're going to go over some of the relevant UI and set up our workspace in a way that's optimal for shading. When you launch Blender, your interface should be looking fairly similar to this, especially if you're running Blender 2.8. Note that future releases may look a bit different, but those changes should be very minor to what's being shown. If, however, your interface looks like this, then you accidentally installed Blender version 2.3 from 2003. While the user interface does look slick, I do recommend updating to the newest available release. So again, we have this default layout automatically loaded with our standard startup scene. This comes with a giant viewport in solid mode that's taking up too much space along with some extra windows that we don't need. If we wanted to, we could definitely mess around with this layout to get something more usable, but this of course takes too much time. Instead, we want to streamline the setup so we can always get the shading much faster. One way to do this is by using the pre-made workspaces found on this top bar. We're going to choose the shading workspace which loads in this layout. In this configuration, we get a smaller viewport in look dev mode which is useful for viewing our materials, a shader editor window which we'll use to build our node networks, a file browser window for loading in textures, an image editor window, and some extra windows off to the side which includes the outliner window and the properties window. And although this layout is a great starting template, it really is just a template which we can still modify. What I recommend is collapsing the outliner since we'll rarely use it, and then I'm just going to swap this image editor for a UV editor which will become useful later on. Of course, you can use whatever configuration you'd like, but this is the layout I'll be using for the course. That being said, I'll still be resizing some of these windows fairly frequently. Also, if I ever maximize a specific window, you can do that by hovering the cursor inside that environment and then just use the hotkey Control spacebar. Now that we've configured our workspace, there's just two more things we need to set up before committing our lives to the dark art of nodes. The first of these is enabling an add-on built into Blender called Node Wrangler, which is just going to make our lives much, much easier. To do this, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and with community support enabled, search for Node Wrangler, which we can now enable. To check that Node Wrangler is active, you can just hit N in the Shader Editor to open the N menu, which should now have a tab called Node Wrangler. The second thing we need to set up is much simpler, and it goes as follows. Using the hotkey Control alt p Blender will use your default browser to open the CG Matter Patreon page. For this step, you'll want to choose whether or not you want to donate, but we can now close this page and return to Blender. So by manipulating our layout and enabling Node Wrangler, we've now done all the prep work necessary for the rest of the course. In the next lesson, we'll go over what a material really is in Blender, so I'll see you there in just a bit.